Now, there's no way you can build up your bones, okay, if you have osteoporosis, with calcium. It's not going to happen. What's going to happen if you attempt to do that is you're going to get calcification of your arteries. So in this video, I'm going to show you some insights on osteoporosis as well as osteopenia. What is osteoporosis? Osteoporosis is a loss of bone density and bone mass. And so the problem with that is you're at risk for a fracture. Now, the purpose of bone is to give you structure, to have a place where ligaments can attach, and it's also a reserve for minerals. So if you need more calcium or phosphorus, bone is that reserve. And so many people just focus on the calcium aspect of uh, bone, but phosphorus, like 85% of phosphorus is stored in your bone, yet we ignore phosphorus. And the thing you need to know uh, about phosphorus is that you can have problems with your bone if you have uh, too little phosphorus or too much. Because if you have too much phosphorus, as in if you drink a lot of sodas or things with phosphoric acid or junk foods, uh, that can cause a bone loss as well. But just so you know, phosphorus is in a lot of foods. It's in um, meats, fish, eggs. It's even in dairy. It's in vegetables. So most people have enough phosphorus unless they're doing things to deplete phosphorus like I said, consuming junk foods or drinking the sodas, or they have a kidney problem, or they're taking certain medications that are interfering with phosphorus. Osteoporosis is severe bone loss, um, putting you at risk for fractures. Osteopenia is kind of a subclinical uh, or a stage that comes before osteoporosis. And what's interesting about osteopenia is over 50% of women over the age of 50 have some degree of osteopenia. And a significant amount of men have it as well. But osteopenia doesn't really put you at risk for fractures. It's just a good uh, indicator that, you know, you're going down a road that you could end up with osteoporosis. But typically, a lot of people are told, you know, here, take these medications, exercise. Uh, maybe you should start chewing those um, chocolate calcium bone building things, which are just a joke. But there's a paradox involved with calcification. Uh, what they found with this paradox is that, uh, People that have osteoporosis have a much higher degree of calcification in the arteries and the joints. So that's kind of weird that you're having all this excess calcium, but it's not going in the right place. The other point I want to bring up about bone is that in the bone marrow, you have an entire factory that is making blood, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So bone is composed of not just calcium, a lot of minerals. Also, 35% of bone is protein, mostly in the form of collagen. So let's go through the key uh, nutrients that are needed to either reverse osteopenia and osteoporosis, and even another thing called osteomalacia. Let me just tell you what that is. Osteomalacia is kind of soft bones in adults, and that is primarily uh, from a vitamin D deficiency. Uh, when this occurs in children, we call that rickets. When we're dealing with osteoporosis or osteopenia, we're not just looking at a loss of calcium. We're looking at a vitamin K2 deficiency, a vitamin D3 deficiency usually, which works with K2 together. So let's just start out with vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is a fairly recently uh, discovered vitamin. It's a fat-soluble vitamin. It comes from fatty foods. It also can come from fermented foods. Um, in Asia, they have something called NATO, which is fermented soybeans, and that is very high in vitamin K2. Uh, vitamin K2 is also in raw sauerkraut, but mainly it's in like a fatty sausage, it's in fatty cheese, it's in, even in egg yolks, it's in liver. And so what you need to know about that is that if you're on a low-fat diet or you're taking certain medications that block vitamin K2, like statins, if you're on a blood thinner, or even antidepressants, antacids, certain medications for high blood pressure, or even medications uh, for erectile dysfunction, you're not going to get enough vitamin K2. So vitamin K2 is a really, really important, if not the most important vitamin for making your bones really, really solid and hard. But you also need vitamin D3 with it. And vitamin D3 helps the absorption of calcium by a factor of 20x in the small intestine. And so vitamin D helps absorb calcium into the blood from the digestive system. And then vitamin K2 takes it from that blood and drives it into the bone 
So it's really important to understand what K2 does and to make sure either you get it in your diet or you're taking it as a supplement. If you're taking it as a supplement, I recommend the form that's called MK7, okay, versus other forms like MK4. MK7 is a natural form and it lasts about 48 times longer in your body versus the half-life of MK4 with about 20,000 IUs of vitamin D3. Now, another key vitamin for bone is vitamin A, vitamin A. And I'm not talking about the precursor beta carotene. Retinol, which is the bioavailable true form of vitamin A, is really high in egg yolks. This is why eggs are just so important in many different ways in your diet, but especially to get enough vitamin uh, A. Vitamin A is not just going to help you build bone, but it's also going to prevent some of the toxicities that potentially could occur from vitamin D, even though those would be very rare. I don't recommend getting your vitamin A from a supplement. Just get it from your food. Egg yolks, liver, or other organ meats. Vitamin A is in uh, cheese, also in butter, and cod liver oil as well. And so vitamin D3, K2, and A are all fat-soluble vitamins. So another thing to look out for or, or understand is that uh, you need a good gallbladder and uh, a good liver to produce the bile to absorb these nutrients. So if you had your gallbladder out or you have some type of problem with your liver, as in you know fatty liver, these reasons could be uh, why you're not getting these nutrients. In which case, you should probably just take some bile salts to help with the absorption. So we have to make sure that we're getting these nutrients from the diet. We have to make sure that nothing's countering those vitamins. We have to make sure we absorb them with the right things, like the bile salts. But we also have other things that help build your bone, like minerals. Yes, I would be taking some form of calcium if I had osteoporosis or osteopenia, but not as a standalone. I would make sure uh, we would take all these other things as well. But I would not take the form of calcium that is not very bioavailable, and that's calcium carbonate. And so many people are taking this type. Basically, it's like limestone. You'd be better off chewing on the cement uh, outside your house because that's really what it is. It's just the, the form of calcium that has to go through like 12 different biochemical steps before it gets absorbed in your body. And if you're getting older, um, you may find that you don't have enough stomach acid to absorb this calcium. So that's another barrier. If you don't have the acid in the stomach, okay, you're not going to be able to absorb the calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and the trace minerals that I'm going to talk about next. And so the way you would know that you wouldn't have enough stomach acid is usually you have indigestion, uh, bloating, or acid reflux. So the type of calcium I would take is like a calcium magnesium supplement, but try to get your calcium mostly from food, dairy, sardines, uh, deep leafy green vegetables, all have a good amount of calcium and magnesium. And magnesium helps activate vitamin D. Also, potassium is really important too. So you can get your magnesium and uh, potassium from leafy greens, like large salads. Now, as far as the trace minerals, zinc, copper, and boron are the top trace minerals, but there's other ones too. So if you were to take like a, a trace mineral complex, that would be the best thing. Uh, with emphasis with the um, zinc, boron, and the copper. These can activate certain proteins in bone. Uh, so those are really, really important as well. And boron helps you balance out uh, the calcium and magnesium. It just helps you absorb those two minerals, as well as the activators of the proteins that help you form bone, since 35% of bone is protein. And of course, when we talk about protein, make sure you have the best bioavailable type of protein, and that would be animal proteins. Eggs are the top um, protein, and then you have fish. Shellfish would be really, really important. Oysters, clams, shrimp are really good because that will not only give you high quality protein, but the trace minerals as well. But you might be saying, well, what about all the cholesterol? Well, guess what bile salts are made out of? Cholesterol. And you need cholesterol to make bile salts to help you absorb these fat soluble nutrients. And you also need cholesterol to uh, help build hormones, sex hormones, specifically estrogen. It's not very surprising that many women after menopause end up with their bones becoming osteoporotic. And that has to do with this sudden drop or shift in this estrogen dropping down. So how do you build that back up? 
Well, make sure you have all the precursors to making these hormones, and that would be like cholesterol. So as you approach menopause, you want to increase more cholesterol, okay? And cholesterol does not come from plant foods. It comes from animal foods, eggs, butter, meats, things like that. And if you complement those foods with a large salad or vegetables each day, it can really help you regulate and moderate the amount of cholesterol going through the body. Not that you're concerned with that or not, but I think the balance of both of those type of foods, plant-based and um, animal-based, are really important. Exercise would be an important thing to add into uh, this uh, program to stimulate the bone growth, which will also uh, indirectly reduce stress because cortisol is very destructive on your bones. So if you're going through chronic stress, that could be another reason on top of the menopause situation where the adrenals have to back up your ovaries, that could be a big trigger for uh, osteopenia or then osteoporosis. The other thing you need to know about osteoporosis is that that's a pretty severe situation and it's going to take a good amount of time to fix this problem. And it could take actually up to six years of healthy eating. But I wanted to give you this background information so you have all the different pieces to this puzzle. What's very interesting too about um, medication for osteoporosis is that uh, some of these medications, real popular medications, uh, increase the risk for fractures, which we're trying to avoid. Now, since we uh, emphasize uh, probably the most important uh, piece of this puzzle, which is K2, uh, there's some additional information that you should know about that. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.